In this video I introduce you to spawning blueprints and destructible meshes. By the end of the video you can expect to have a button which spawns a bomb blueprint and a destructible mesh which can be exploded by the bomb blueprint. If you're new to my channel and you're just dropping in on this video, I'm a game developer currently putting out Unreal Engine 4 and Blender content to help my viewers. If you have any tutorial requests or you see anything on this list of topics that I'm covering that you're interested in, it would be so awesome if you dropped a sub. It really supports me putting out content. If you're just here for some quick knowledge on what I'm covering today, that's also cool. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the video. Good morning everyone. Spawning bombs, destroying walls, today's going to be a good day. Before watching this episode, you will need the button and the bomb blueprint produced in episode 7 and the decal material produced in episode 2. Before we start, just want to say my standard thank you for the subs. As always, it's been so good so far. I'm loving it. Let's keep it going. And second, I've been told by a few people that I need to start telling you guys to hit that bell somewhere on the video so you guys get notifications. So it means a lot to me if you could hit that bell so you know what's going on. Anyway, let's jump into this video. The first thing we need to do is have some more space so we can spawn some bombs and destroy some walls. Okay, when you've got that room sorted, I want you to look in the description and download the Crack PNG I've got for you guys. So, once you've done that, we're going to actually go back into our materials, duplicate the decal, and we're going to call this Crack. So, once you've got that, open up your decal, then select the Crack PNG. And now we have a Crack decal, which we can put on something. Now we're going to make a destructible mesh. So what I want you to do is go into edit, plugins, go into built-in and type in apex destruction and enable this and give it a little restart. Okay so once you've got that plugin enabled we can then make a destructible mesh. So browse to your wall, right click it and then create destructible mesh. Uh, open this up so this is what your mesh is going to look like. Here are some details on the right. If you click fracture and then change the explode amount, you can actually see how it's going to fracture apart. What I want you to know now is three things. Cell site count, this is the number of pieces that your mesh will split into. If this is reduced to two, this will be just chopped in half. Damage threshold is how much damage is needed before your mesh breaks. And the final thing is enable impact damage. If this is checked, if anything with a physical collision walks into or touches your destructible mesh, it will fracture, it will break. If this is off, then it won't break. Okay, so we're going to leave it off for now because we don't want to just run into it and smash the wall. We want a bomb to explode it. So this is everything we need to do for now. We've, um, we've got a cool looking explodable wall. So close that down. And now we're going to make a blueprint with the crack and the wall together. So we're gonna to go to blueprints, we're gonna right click, create a blueprint class, create an, and then select your wall. This exploding wall or something like that. Add component destructible. You'll notice that sometimes it doesn't give you a preview. I figured a way of fixing this, I still don't know if this is a bug or what it is, but if you actually go to your destructible mesh, uh, meshes and if you just select it then you go back into your blueprint and bring it in instantly it will appear like that but I don't know strange Unreal Engine always has these strange bugs sometimes alright and now we're gonna add our decal so make a crack get your crack thing and just position this until you're happy with it Okay, and that's everything we need for the wall. So if you, you actually 
take that off now and replace your wall with the blueprint wall we just made. So you can actually copy the location, paste the location in here, copy the scale, then copy the rotation. And then it should be in the exact same position that the other one was in. Then just delete the decal that we made earlier. Okay, cool. We've got our ball and we've got a crack on it. Now let's spawn some bonds. So now we can duplicate the button for the 100th time. Because what we want to do is when we click on the button, when we overlap the button, just call this button spawn, BP. When we overlap the button, we want to spawn our bonds. And then you can just delete this. We don't actually need anything except for the box over there. Then all we're going to do is type in spawn actor from class. Then we're going to select our bomb. There we go. So all this is saying is spawn a blueprint, select the blueprint, decide the location, rotation and scale. And that's pretty much it to be honest, uh, you don't need to worry about this and then this is if you want to get a reference to it, so if you want to do something to that blueprint, you can do it here. So now what we're going to do is create a little reference location so we know where it's going to spawn, so we're just going to add a scene, then we're just going to put this scene just over here, then we can use that, we can, you can name it ref location or whatever you want. Now if we get the world location of this and then we can plug this in here we should find now when we overlap our button that we spawn a bomb. So plug that there and let's see what happens here. There it is. It's worked perfectly. And notice that you can keep doing it for as many times as you want. That's all pretty cool. Okay, so let's say we wanted to spawn a blueprint, but we wanted it to shoot across the room like out of a cannon or something. What we can actually do is pull off this and we can set velocity. Like so. And then we can just add in a velocity here. So anything you want to do to the blueprint you're spawning, you pull off here and then you can change it. You can change the materials, you can change anything you want, basically. So if we plug this into here now, when we spawn the bomb, it should start with a velocity of a thousand in the Z and there we go. So we're pretty much done at this point. I'm just going to rotate this round so the bomb spawns in front of the destructible mesh and then in the bomb on event begin play I'm just going to call the explode function so it's instantly getting ready to explode. Okay so I just tweaked a bit of lighting I'm going to lower this down to 500 or something so it's not all the way in the air and then to explode a bomb, to explode a destructible mesh with radial force, this is the pushback, we actually need to go into destructible damage and change this to 1. Or do you remember when we, were, when we had our destructible mesh, we had the damage threshold? This is the health and how much damage is required before it explodes. So if we go back onto our bomb, this damage, destructible damage needs to be greater than what it is set in here. So just to be safe, we can put something like free. And now if we spawn this bomb, what do you think is going to happen, guys? So we've spawned our bomb and it explodes because the radial force is greater than the destructibles damage threshold, the health. So it all explodes, but it's not looking quite right because the meshes either side of the destructible are causing it to lock in place and sort of vibrate. So what we need to do is prevent the walls around the destructible from colliding with it. And to do that, we can change the collision. So if you select all the walls around the destructible, go down to collision, then change collision preset to custom, and then under destructible, click ignore. And now we just have one more thing to do. That is when the mesh is exploded, the decal is still gonna be there. So when your character walks over it, it's gonna print onto your character. So what we need to do is under the exploding wall, and you can see I've already done it here, we can actually fire an event off the destructible mesh. So if you go down to the events on component fracture, when the mesh explodes or fractures or breaks, 
this will be fired. So if we just bring in our decal with control and drag and then pull off and click destroy component, this will destroy the decal after the explosion has happened. So if we test this out now, everything seems to be working well. If your wall's not getting pushed back enough or pushed back too much, or your character's getting pushed back too much, go into the bomb on the radial force, play around with the impulse strength and impulse velocity change until you get it right for your game. Okay guys, this was a very quick tutorial, but there's just a few things I want you to take away from this. One, we can spawn blueprints with the spawn actor of class node. We can then pull off the return value to edit any of the properties. Two, to make a destructible mesh, once you enable the Apex Destructible plugin, you can right click any mesh and create destructible. Three, you can either destroy a destructible mesh with enable impact damage, any collision with enable impact damage will fracture your mesh, or with radial force, which will fire an impulse and it will fracture the mesh as long as the destructible damage is greater than the damage threshold. And four, when a destructible mesh breaks, you can fire off an event with on component fracture and you can do different things with that. If you would like to learn more on destructible meshes, please do check out my other video because I introduced the apply damage node there where, for example, if you wanted your mesh to break, not from someone walking into it, but you wanted like a specific object to destroy it, such as a cannonball, then you, then you need the apply damage node, which I teach you in the other video. So check that out if you're interested. So guys, that is everything for today. Play around with your destructible meshes, play around with the radial force. And if you want to learn more about destructible meshes, check my other video. And um, yeah, tomorrow we're creating a low poly character in Blender. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for that, so that's going to be an interesting one. But be prepared, it's going to be a long episode because Blender, is, there's a lot to learn. But anyway, get excited, I'm excited. Thank you guys for watching as always. See you next time.